It's showtime. Taking down the other podcasts one by one. That clip is why people make fun of you. With Carl. This is all just for the radio. And And why Mike? We want business to take care of. We are the number one podcast on the internet today. Welcome to yet another episode of WATS, the show thousands of people come to to answer the age-old question, what's the deal with social media? You can't find a show with gay or straight guys. I'm your host, Carl Hamburger. (laughs) With me, as always, is Mike Geary, a.k.a. Blind Mike. What's up, Mike? I like that one. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, buddy. (laughs) I I do have to say, though, now that uh, Carl has clearly come down with the dreaded virus, he has mandated that I can't go to the Zero AIDS community subreddit. So tough luck, guys. Yeah, I'm I'm still getting over this sickness that I had last week at this time. It's so fucking annoying. But fortunately, Mike won't make me laugh, so I'll be fine. (laughs) It was all a big joke to us a couple weeks ago. Some people are saying I won't read your super chats. Who told you that? Chad Zumach? I will read every super chat. I'll even interrupt my blind calls in a very rude manner to do so. Now, Mike, a lot of people who watch this show know how this show starts because it's legendary. Sure. It's the banter. And most shows can't pull this off. They try, they fail, they move on, they try something else. Because banter only comes naturally when two people really get along and enjoy each other's company and enjoy conversations with each other. And I feel like you and I have that kind of bond, even though Mm. we've never met in person. No, and that really, uh, that bums me out. I'm very sad about that. But I get get my fill of you on this program. That's what makes the banter so great, is that we jam it all into a three minute segment, you know? You know what, that might be what it is. It might be because seven days have gone by and Mike and I have not discussed anything with each other. Right. I don't know what's going on in this life, And so I get to sit down with him at the beginning of Who Are These Socials? A show about social media. Banter, you would think, wouldn't even be a part of it. And yet, here we are, starting the show with banter. It's an explosion of banter that we spray all over each other. It's very also, But it's also natural. Sure. Right? It's a very natural banter that we get right into. No one even notices it happens. We barely even have a jingle for it. Call them blind Mike, gonna talk about what they like. They're gonna chew the shit as it's been said. And you know when you get to this part of the show, well, it's time for the banter. It's time for the banter. It's time for the banter. It's time time for the banter. All right. I mean, this is obviously very natural. It happens organically or else we wouldn't have things like this. Ban, 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 banter world order. B-W-O. So, Mike, I want to start off the banter today by yes. saying that I watched you on First Date with Lauren Compton. Ah, yes. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Fantastic appearance. A lot of people said she and I had a lot of chemistry. Yes, I thought it was great. But I have a question about Lauren for you. Okay. Does she ask questions based on her own anecdotes so she could one-up people? Because th- there was a couple times where she goes, uh, what was it like when you had your first kiss? Because mine was crazy. <laughs> and then she just wants to tell you her story about her first kiss. I think you meant more when she was like, what is it, what's it like seeing? Do you have any stories about that? And yeah, that was, was, like, that was pretty no. rude. That was pretty rude. <laughs> What's your house look like? Draw it for me. <laughs> it was very unfortunate to see a lot of the comments that really talked about how little clothing she was wearing. And I was like, I didn't notice anything. It seemed like wow. she was bundled up to me. <laughs> well, you said something I didn't know about before. You said that uh, your eyesight is such that something 20 feet away will appear 400 feet away to you. That's That's the basic breakdown of it yeah well yeah and i'm sure it's worse now but even that you could still see her tits right oh yeah yeah, yeah. her cleavage was ridiculous (laughs) that That is why i wore the sunglasses had nothing to do with the lighting in there smart yeah yes get your creepy eyes going (laughs) she doesn't know what you're looking at yeah smart move but did you notice that though where she and i get it the show is called first date so it's like a i mean i wouldn't know how to answer that what was your first kiss like i don't i remember i'm an adult what do you mean but there were there were some things i was nervous about because i'm like i don't know if i have great sexual exploits but i will say she was more like fun and went with the joke than i expected i feel like a lot of those shows 
with someone like me on it wouldn't it wouldn't have gone as smoothly i don't think so she played along she, pretty well I yeah i thought she was good she yeah. she seemed to genuinely enjoy your company and uh you did a great job well thank but, you sir but i learned something about you What's that? i was a little surprised by oh no you're afraid of birds i'm not it's a healthy uh a, a, a healthy respect for birds because they're a, a, <laughs> an unnatural beast. <laughs> what do you mean unnatural? What do you mean by that? They have a gift that no other animal does. They can fly at you. What do you mean That's no a, other? That, no other animal. There's there's insects. There were pterodactyls. Well, come on. Million okay, years ago. Okay, sure. Let's go to things we could squash <laughs> and things that don't <laughs> exist anymore. <laughs> I mean, there's airplanes. There's all sorts of things that can fly. If you're like, if you're if you don't have a, a healthy if you don't your heart rate doesn't get up if you walk by a pack of geese you're the fool all right not me we had when we were down in florida we had peacocks that hung out in our front yard every morning these peacocks were hanging out right by the front door very friendly would you be afraid of peacocks again not afraid no i would respect them enough <laughs> to say i'm not gonna tango with you i get you guys you win this one i gave them some bagels how do you that's feel very, about that? That's very sweet of you. I mean, that's, that's what we had. It's not like I was looking through all the peacock food. I was like, fuck that. They're getting bagels today. You know, I was just... Well, that that's smart. You came to them hat in hand. You respected them. I have no qualms with that. Okay. So now I'm even more confused about your relationship with birds. It's... You're, so you're you're impressed by them. The, the... Yes. That's that's a good way to say it. I am I'm okay. impressed by that. I, re I have a healthy respect. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And they, and they me, I think. <laughs> There's a lot of different species of birds too, but you think that the geese are the worst ones? Geese weird me out in uh, particular because they're unassuming, but they're some of the meanest. They are, yeah, they can be mean, but they're also quite delicious. You ever had a goose? I haven't. Maybe that would help me get over some of my issues if I best them by eating them. You know what? Fuck social media. <laughs> I want to explore this. It would be funny if I was just interviewing you for an hour and a half on this show. I'm realizing that the true talent of you is answering questions, Mike. Let's go rapid fire <laughs> about birds right now. What about what about robins? How do you feel about robins? Go. It would be great if I ate a goose and suddenly I was a different guy. Like I had confidence and yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally change, change your perspective on life. life. Yeah. yeah, that's all that was holding me back. I don't think that would happen. Hmm, probably not. Mike, let's start out with some music. I know you're not a big music fan. Well, this isn't going to change your mind on that. Birds and music. Who are these? Andrew Blakemore loves to send me in. He likes to find on uh, the crappy music subreddit these different videos people post. And uh, this is apparently some type of genre of anti-music called noise. Okay. And this person is performing it in front of a uh, half dozen people who I'm sure are very much enjoying this performance. <laughs> Now, I'm keeping a close eye on our, our viewers. No one dropped off just now. I'm <laughs> shocked. Oh, no, no, we just lost seven. There we go. Okay. You, I had a even, feeling that would happen. Even I, after you set it up the way you did, for like five seconds, I was thinking, oh, it hasn't started yet. <laughs> yeah. And I have to say, because I've been in the music scene in here in Rochester, New York, for a few decades, that I've seen bands like this. They set up, they got their amps and stuff, and they got, and then they just start making noise. And it goes on for 45 minutes and you, you, you wonder, uh, what are you trying to accomplish guys? Uh, what, what's, yeah. uh, what's all this about now? So I guess this is like the instrumental equivalent of Yoko Ono or something. Yeah. Just do whatever, yes. or, you know, abstract art where you splash paint against the canvas. Someone, someone was listening to Yoko Ono. They're like, well, I can't sing this well, but I'm sure I could <laughs> contribute it another way. <laughs> That's hilarious. We could be in the same field. I That's right. Yes. <laughs> Could you imagine influences Yoko Ono? I'm throwing this this disc out. I'm done with this. No well, one compares them to Yoko Ono. Well, I could never. I wish could. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Are you kidding me? Yoko Ono, I mean, it's nice of you to say, sir, but 
All right, let's uh, cleanse our ear palate because Adam Thoreau in our Discord posted this gem. And uh, I'll just set this up for you because I know you can't see real well. This is a uh, a larger gale. So this is a this is a big gale. Okay. And uh, she's got well proportionally big boobs. Hmm. A lot of times mm-hmm. the girls who are bigger love to emphasize the fact that they have big boobs. Now what they don't realize is that guys are not impressed. <laughs> in sure. Way. It just comes. Yeah. So do I. So do me and Vinny. Right. Know? Right. Yeah. Right. It's like well proportionately. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But all right. Let's see what she's got. Sucking a lollipop, drinking a milkshake. You ready for the hook? It's, it's building up. Wait. I'm I'm already hooked, so I can't. All right, wait. let's go. I just wonder what her follow up's gonna be. You know, like how many songs can you write about your boobs? <laughs> Ham wallets or something? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they love my sugar tits, but stay for the ham wallet. <laughs> wow. It is catchy, though. Good for her. Is she doing a, a sexy dance, I assume, in the video? Oh, yeah. She's shaking her boobs around. <laughs> but the, the part that you're missing, obviously, is yeah. that she's sucking on lollipops and eating candy throughout. Well, it's very sexy. <laughs> well, it's very sexy, and also it shows you how she got those tits with all that sugar. Yeah, she's like eating. a nice gal with a turkey leg in her mouth <laughs> dancing around. <laughs> hey, is that a Smarties in your pocket right now? Wow. <laughs> what are you doing later tonight? Oh, full sausage links in your pocket. Interesting. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. That's uh, that's too much. Since we're already on YouTube, let's, let's hang here for a minute. I'll stop the show and watch YouTube. Because Chile De Castro, we know that he was sentenced to 180 days in jail yep. in a correctional facility. And since then, we played it on the uh, show last week. He's able to make these phone calls into another YouTuber who has access to his channel. So they're streaming his conversations. Well, he showed up in court again. And very sad, Chile, begging for forgiveness, saying, you know, your Honor, I fucked up. Can we start over again? Well, hey, 14 days in jail changes a man. <laughs> it does. It does. And so this first clip I want to play for you, this is his attorney talking, but it, the camera pans over to Chili, who's making this really sad, like, ah, woe is me. I messed up. I'm so sorry oh. kind of face. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> And uh, Mr. DeCastro was convicted. He, he is given six months in jail. One thing I know he's going to do today is for no other purpose, no matter what your uh, ruling is, he wants to say sorry. I've asked him if he'd say sorry to the court. I understand that. <laughs> he's, must- he's nodding his head. He's like, yes, I want to say I'm sorry to the court. Yes, I and, do. And uh, your honor, if you're willing to meet our demands, he has even offered sugar on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you how sorry he is? He's really, really, really sorry. You may see it is that he should have apologized to the marshal. I don't see the marshal in here. That he... Oh, he wanted to apologize to the marshal too. Oh, good. Yeah, but the marshal. It's about time there. they made up. Yeah, so I guess I guess that's not going to happen. So this goes on for a little while. The attorney says, you know, he probably didn't behave the way he should, and all that kind of stuff. So the judge, who I am falling in love with, sure. Is watching these videos that he's been posting on his YouTube page. <laughs> <laughs> so this oh, is you're the ju- sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is the judge's response. This is great. Uh, yeah, so I, I had a chance. So he's going to apologize to me in a minute, but that's not what he's saying on what he's publishing online in his phone calls from the jail. That's not what he's saying at all. And are you aware that he has a 
a trial pending in Las Vegas Municipal Court. He has a case pending in Good Springs Justice Court where he continues to manufacture situations where he'll get arrested. Your Honor, I recognize that's what he was sort of doing for a living, and this is, um, I, he's now being incarcerated. I, and so, what he's saying in the couple of weeks since he's been incarcerated, when he calls from the jail and publishes them on his website, is not what he's about to say to me. I, okay? So he's going to apologize to me now, but that's not what he's doing publicly, okay? <laughs> yes, Your Honor, I, I, I hear that. I, I won't have him speak at this time. I love that. The attorney goes, you know what? I, we're going to have an apologize, but you know what? That probably is moot at this point. We won't do that. Uh, Your Honor, i got to be honest. I don't watch this terrible YouTube channel, so I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. No one's watching that shit, Your Honor. Is that common in, in the legal system that you're, an attorney drags a grown man in and says, <laughs> Mrs. Judge, my client has something he wants to say to you. Isn't that right, Chili? I can't imagine. I'm this is sorry, so Judge. <laughs> this is so bizarre, but I love the way this played out. Uh, Mike and I were talking before the show. No one sent this to me. I was just watching this for pleasure the other night. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on with Chili? I turned on this video. I'm like, this is amazing. Because the judge is just not having it. I love it. The judge is like, talk to the hand. I, I'm not going to sit here and let this guy pretend that he cares. He's got his crocodile tears going in the back of the court. Oh, what was well, me? That's what I was going to say. Before you believe the somber look on his face, let's not forget this is an actor that rose to the heights of Power Rangers. So Correct. he can pull a fast one on you. Yes. No, it's, I mean, there's a lot of emotional range you need for that role. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So obviously he's got that down. So there's a real quick clip just to show how this uh ends up yes yeah, sure all right so your motion is denied thank you thank you motion denied back to <laughs> the correctional facility with you chili de castro <laughs> and i again i feel bad i am not on the side of the courts and the police this is not the role that i want to play but chili de castro sure. is such an obnoxious asshole his attorney even says at some point in this he goes i i realize that he comes off as a little obnoxious in these videos, but I, I'm not sure they're against the law. And the judge goes, yeah, you know, he can film all he wants. Yeah. The problem was is that he was obstructing, getting in the way and, and made it, you know, made it difficult for the police officer to perform his duty that day. He should go with the Alex Jones defense and be like, your honor, that was delete laws. I'm Jose DeCastro. Oh. Don't you understand? I play a character on YouTube. Yes. You know like what? Mr. Holy Rimes. shit. You're right. That would have made way more sense because then when he, you know, when she goes, I, I've been listening to his calls that he's doing from the prison. Again, that, that is delete laws. I have no control over that person. He's an asshole. Chili calls me after the show. He's like, I actually, I'm going to need you in court. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need you in Nevada next week. Oh, he's going to fire his attorney once he hears this. He's like, yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was right there. <laughs> it was right there in front of us the whole time. A quick news update since we're talking about YouTube. King Cobra JFS has been evicted. Oh, no. Really? Yes. Yes. And there's a lot of speculation. Now, King Cobra has not come out and said this. There's a lot of speculation that his girlfriend is the one who got him evicted from her last uh. visit, screaming and carrying on. And the neighbor's just like, all right, that's too much. You know, Carl, my other senses give me a keen eye for this kind of stuff. Uh -huh. I suspected she might have been bad news when we started talking about it. <laughs> It took a blind man to realize this was not was a good a little, relationship. I didn't want to show my hand, but I was a little nervous. Yeah, well, you were right about that. Yeah, so uh, King Cobra, he actually came on and he goes, you know, my uh, landlord's been very patient with me. <laughs> he, was, he was actually very polite about it. He's like, I get it. Good. I'm a problem. But apparently, and this is just what I read on the internet, but apparently the unit that he's currently occupying is now being advertised on the website and i can't imagine someone wanting to live in that shithole <laughs> could you imagine moving in after king cobra lived there it's for like, a few it's years? like buying marlon brando's house nope <laughs> no nope <laughs> no 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 <laughs> not even close my friend all right you guys are being generous let me let's get caught up on some super chats yay super chats i appreciate it kyle lackey five bucks says Get Blind Mike out to Vegas. Mike, the people want you at these events. Oh, it'd be great to have you at Hackamania. Ooh, that's interesting. But I mean, I'm hearing maybe a WATP in Boston, perhaps? You come to me. I have been mentioning that a few times. It seems Ooh. like people want us to come to Boston, and I, like I would love that. that. Yeah, I like the sound of that, too. 
I would love to uh, to come to Boston. Dang lizard, two euros. Boschetti became Moonhead. Vinny is Eclipse Head. <laughs> All right, I I get down with. I'll call him Eclipse Head on uh, the creep off. I get down with that. It's sad. Vinny can't even have that, you know? But shit, I know. Comes in, <laughs> hogs his glory. It's unbelievable. Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the super chat. Dang Lizard is another hero supporting the show that would also help feed Carl's cat in Florida. Dang Lizard, another five euro says, Mike, I know you can't read a room, but how can you, the Howard Stern of our time, do a show with a nap talking smile talker like loser Carl. Wow. Stern had his whack packers, you know? Carl's my uh, Beetlejuice. I very guess. good, yes. <laughs> Could you imagine if Howard and Beetlejuice did an hour long program every week? That'd be amazing. All right, all right, Beetle, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they were talking, or maybe with like uh, Eric the actor and they were just talking about American Idol or something. I would have loved that. <laughs> yeah. That would have been fantastic. Who wouldn't have tuned in for that shit? Take that, dang lizard. KJ coming in with $10. Says, the banter is so seamless. I didn't even realize it had started. Well done. KJ, this is the magic. When, when I think about who are these socials, I think magic. That's what we do here. Yeah. I Thank worry if we, don't, if we didn't warn people like that, it would start a riot. People would be like, what's going on? We've never seen anything like this in broadcasting. Correct. That's why I definitely put out disclaimers. Yes. Dang lizard. Carl, you are eating bagels in your front yard. No, the peacocks were eating the bagels, <laughs> sir. I was eating you the bagels inside. Yeah. What, <laughs> what's so confusing about this? Tukey went and bought bagels and then we ate them. Rick, you 32, 25 bucks. Heard blind Mike was afraid of birds. I think that was <laughs> before I brought it up. I don't know. There's a lot of bird no, emojis. I respect birds. I'm not afraid of them. I was not expecting that when <laughs> when she asked, like, irrational fears, I think was the question. I don't freak out like some namby-pamby, but uh, yeah, I say... Because well, you don't know it's there. You don't I even know. know. <laughs> I say, you don't bother me, piece. I won't bother you, friend. Let's go about our business. <laughs> Dildo swag is 10 bucks. Mike was violated by a flock of geese on multiple occasions. Is that true? It's not, but I do remember part of what started is I remember a girl on the um, the, the front page of the East Long Meadow, like reminder, whatever the free newspaper you have is. Yeah. She was getting bitten in the ass by a goose. And I thought these are not these are not beings to be trifled with. Oh, so that's so she was getting goosed by a goose. Exactly. And that is yeah. that is stuck with you. Absolutely. Through all these years. Interesting. All right. Sit down on the couch, Mike. Let's explore this. Let's unpack this <laughs> memory that you have. Dennis in East Boston. By a goose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell. Dennis in East Boston. Find out was was the photo not actually a photo, and was there no girl? And is there even <laughs> a free circular in your area, sir? <laughs> Dennis in right, East Boston. Man. Five dollars, Mike. If it wasn't actually your dad, who was that guy in Portland posing as him? Was it just a <laughs> random fan who happened to be sitting in the front row? Good question. I don't know who that was. <laughs> So you're talking about the uh, live show, the Kirk Minahan live yes, show. Yes, the Kirk Minahan live show. He uh, he goes he goes, Mike, someone's here to see you. And I stood up, and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Mike's dad. And then he came over to me, and I go, is my dad really here? And he goes, nah. <laughs> <laughs> some fine. fat fuck that was in the, uh, I assume was in the front row. <laughs> Very I nice wonder. Guy, if, I wonder if it's the same guy who posed as you at the uh, subreddit surfing live event that we did here in Rochester. Oh, interesting. Maybe. I don't know. Could I mean, be. You, you said fat fox. So that's why I thought maybe. Dang lizard, two euros. Alan with two N, you smile talking loser. How mangy? Hmm. Mangy? What is that? I don't know. Miguel, $5. Carl, I want you to start a new side band called Ham Wallet immediately. Mike, you can play the tambourine. I like that. Or maybe the, you... uh, the xylophone. <laughs> oh, can you play xylophone? That'd be fun. I could figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> no, you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try though. That's funny. Uh, normal Mike Henry, two bucks. Thank you very much. Michael C, two bucks. Who drew the peener on Mike's face? Oh, dude, why you got to spoil everyone's fun? Oh, Carl, you're at it again. You and your graffiti. Why do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Audiophile America, five bucks, says, Cringe of the Week is Carl using Talk to the Hand in 2024. Fix your co-host, Mike. That was the joke, asshole. <laughs> the judge would say that. Get it? The face doesn't want to hear it. 
is my understanding. <laughs> was it uh, maybe I got that from David Tell, his new special where he goes, all the all the great sayings are already taken, like touch the hand and <laughs> Allah Akbar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, if you ever watched that, check it out. Uh, Arctan 64 is member for three months, says the last time he got evicted, he cut pieces of his carpet and sold the chunks online for like a hundred dollars for a one by one chunk of rotten carpet. That's interesting because I actually own some turf from the Buffalo Bills Stadium. Someone bought it oh, for me. This and is a I much better deal. I know. I was just thinking the same thing. I'm like, what would I rather have? Because the Bills turf is, you know, 100, 120 yards long and very wide. There's a lot. But the carpeting at King Cobra's apartment, there's not a lot I like there. that. Like you're, if you're at like a memorabilia shop and you see the Bills turf, like dirt from the old Yankee Stadium, yeah. King Cobra's rug, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, whoa, how much is that? <laughs> yeah. That's not for sale, sir. I'll never forget we were at um, Hulk Hogan's place, his stupid memorabilia shop that he has in Clearwater. Okay. And there was this overly excited dude in there who was just getting stoked about everything he saw. Whoa! <laughs> well, it's Kevin Nash! He's like telling everyone in the store. He's like, yeah, we know. It's Kevin Nash. This was a nine-year-old, I assume? <laughs> no, this was a man older than me. It's a man in his 50s. And uh, I'll never forget behind the register, you know, he's, he's talking the cashier's ear off about everything. Behind the register, there is an autographed photo of Hulk Hogan picking up Sly Stallone. That's, I might have told the story. Picking up Sly Stallone from Rocky Three, and he's Ooh. it's autographed by uh, Hulk and Sylvester Stallone. And he gets like, "Whoa, how much is that?" She's like, "That's the only thing that's not for sale in this place, sir." <laughs> in other words, you cannot afford it. <laughs> that's too bad. Didn't even leave with a T-shirt. He bought nothing. Really? Yeah, he was very excited about everything, but bought nothing. I mean, it just meant enough to see it to him, I guess. I guess so. Well, he was telling stories. Everyone was excited. Doc Jones, 73, five bucks. Damn, missed most of the banter again. Oh, well, play my jingle, Mistress K. Is that what you come here for? Just to ask for your jingle? Here comes Holy the money. Thanks for the super chat, Doc Jones, 73. Your dad to me. I got to say, I was going through my board today and I was cleaning some things up, making some room. I forgot about some of these uh, super chat jiggles we had from AI when we mm. first started. Things That's like, a fun one. I don't yeah, really hear that, that often. <laughs> well, that one's Doc Jones' specific one, uh, but uh, here's one. A very large super chat gives us huge boners. <laughs> that was some fun stuff. KJ, five bucks says, Mike, you know you have made it when randoms pretend to be your dad. That's true. <laughs> I, I suppose that's true, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the funniest thing was um, when he got up close to me and he goes, hello, son. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Is that your dad doesn't call you son when you see him? <laughs> not you. Not, doesn't call not the word he uses. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Let's, uh, let's get over to Instagram. Mike, don't be a douche. Instagram in the night, blinded like blind Mike. Check out these reels; they might make you wanna fight. I gotta play for you these reels from this Jenna Gray '88. She's right. this lesbian who looks like Justin Bieber. She has smaller boobs than either of us. And she's got uh, almost 7,000 followers. And it's just like really cringe stuff. So this guy, Joey, sent me a note. He goes, you should check this thing out. So I'm just going to play you some uh, videos here. Okay. See if you can spot a pattern. Wear all the beautiful five foot song women that stays up late scrolling on the TikTok. She's a nurse. Has more than one piercing. A sleeve tap. Traded her Yeti cup for an old Stanley, but now she needs an Owala. Overthinks everything. Work, sleep, and comes home, then repeats. Like, where you at, babe? And then she does this uh, little wink at the end. Where are you at, baby? Does this wink. I don't know if she's treating this like a dating app, but uh, all right, that's, that's one video. Check out this one. Ooh. 
before she Where's the girl that actually enjoys staying home instead of going out? Loves forehead kisses, random compliments, sneaky hugs from behind, and is always apologizing for everything. Like, where are you at, babe? So are these like video Craigslist ads, like soliciting people? It seems or? like it, right? Because these videos come out back to back to back to back. I didn't have to go very far into her profile to find all these videos. Here's another example. Where are all the beautiful five foot something brunettes that wear scrubs, stays up late scrolling the TikTok. All she does is work, sleeps, eats, comes home, take care of her babies. And is always apologizing. Where you at, baby? I don't like the catchphrase for noise, whatever you would call that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it either. It's so she's that playing into the fact that she looks like Justin Bieber. Because isn't that a Bieber song playing? Is on her? oh, is it? Maybe. Well, I can't think now. Is it you and your beautiful? Song? I think so, but I'm not, maybe I'm wrong. Hey, I don't know. Well, let's see what else. Uh, maybe she's got some variety here. What else does she do? Where all the beautiful five foot something girls at? Stays up late, crawls on the TikTok, has insomnia, and absolutely overthinks everything. Like where you at, baby? If if this if she's looking for a girlfriend, <laughs> these are very specific requests well, she's making. That, what dawned on me is maybe she's describing herself. I was thinking saying, that too. Like, hey, we can bond over these things. But she doesn't have a sleeve. She mentioned the other one, a girl with a sleeve, but maybe that's what it is. I don't know. That's an odd approach. And I guess it's different for lesbians. But if I made a video and was like, where am I visually impaired, uh, food addicted, yeah. <laughs> unconfident people at? Come on, ladies. Like smelling your own farts on the couch, <laughs> watching a Yankees game. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, all right, new assignment. I want you to make one of these videos. All Where right. are my girls at? <laughs> yeah, I want you to make one of these. Here's one more example for you to pull from. That one girl stays up late scrolling on her phone. Ended up on a lesbian TikTok. Listens to 90s country music. Loves to go mudding. Riding back roads, dancing in the headlights, runs on Starbucks coffee, and absolutely overthinks everything. Like, where you at, baby? Uh, maybe you should overthink this a little bit. So let me read some of the comments that show up on these videos. Okay. How many of these are you going to do? <laughs> Here's one that just says, well, delete this. <laughs> okay, so it's a different tone. That I was thinking... If she's getting laid off of these, good for her. If she's finding uh, Mrs. Wright, I suppose. But it doesn't I don't know. Like the case. <laughs> uh, this this is a joke, right? Uh, here's okay. one. Here's People one. That says, are not uh, it says, "Please swallow a jean jacket." <laughs> uh, another one says, "Shut up, Justin Bieber," and then that one that just says, "Nobody likes you." So that's the feedback, and all of these comments are negative. That's the feedback she's getting on this. How, I'm curious how this person has an audience. Is it from these videos or from something else? That's a great question. I don't know. I'll have to explore further. I'll, I'll get back to you on Jenna Gray 88. If anyone knows very, everything. It's very know. interesting. And it, it's, it also makes me kind of surprised there's not like a video dating app, like Tinder, but where you make these douchey videos. You know, I'm sure there is. Well, there should be no. I mean, how many lesbian apps do you have on your phone, Mike? I have many, but it's been okay. a while since I've been on the dating scene. <laughs> fair fair <laughs> enough. I've gone unused. <laughs> All right. Speaking of negative comments, let's check out what John Sarasani is up to on Instagram because that's his favorite medium. Absolutely. For for his videos. This, this is going to be for the haters, all right? <laughs> Where are we at right now? We're, we're in Barrington, bro. Yeah, what'd you just yell to me across the street? I love everything you post. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Jesus okay. Christ. <laughs> so this is what's so annoying is because you know John wants to be recognized more than anything else in the world. Absolutely. He's got the money. He wants the fame. So he's trying to get recognized. Finally, someone recognizes him, and he has to make it so unbearable. I'm sure this guy immediately regretted it. Like, oh, <laughs> God damn it. Hey, come on, man. You recognize me? Be in my video. Tell everyone I'm awesome. Like, oh, shit. I should have said anything. God well, damn it. Not, the thing that stood out to me is him saying across the street. 
So he was, he had to yell, come up, come here, please. Yeah. I yeah. need to film something with you. Like how th this is John, we, you're, you're, you have a level of notoriety. I won't go as far as to say fame, but like, you've done a good job building up your Instagram channel. You have people that follow you and recognize you and anything. Do you see, I don't know, Ben Affleck doing this? Right. You know? like, yeah. Some people are famous and don't have to tell you how famous they are. Try and be one of those guys, John. But also he's telling him to tell his haters that he's cool. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is he seems rather rattled because I, yes. I've noticed more and more like I had to restrain myself from sending 15 of these because he's funny. made a bunch in the last couple of weeks of like, oh, it looks like one of my haters said this in the comments. Oh, yeah. What a guy that's not cool of a waterfall. And it's like, OK, John, we understand. Yeah, we get it, John. <laughs> and and that's why I, I would try to tell this to stuttering John. Moan does, and I'm sorry to equate this back to him, but another guy with a lot of haters who's just like, I don't get it. I have all these credits. I was on the Tonight Show. I was on the Howard Stern Show. You guys <laughs> like those things, right? We're like, yes, that's what makes it so pathetic. Yes. <laughs> that, that, John, you made millions of dollars. You have a beautiful house and a pool and the stupid waterfall thing. That's what makes it so weird that you're spending your time and energy on this. Why? What are you doing? It kind of it, it makes you respect people that get a lot of hate and like don't respond to it. Like yeah. uh, you could go through a guy that talked about John Sirisani. You could go through Burt Kreischer's comments and see just as mean, if not worse, shit on a lot of them. Like Lauren, Com like Lauren Compton's. I got tagged in these Instagram posts, and I see people saying some like nasty shit. But she's not posting like, oh, so you think I'm just a pair of tits, huh? <laughs> What's the dumbest thing you can do? Yeah, it's, it's respond it's, to these people. It's crazy. You're just giving them fuel. Well, let's see what uh, John's strategy is here. All right, I want to introduce you to my friend Daryl. Thought it was going to be another faceless troll talking some motherfucking shit. Open up his DMs. What does he say? He goes, by the way, I'm 6'5", 300. Well, shit, a little heavier than me, pal. I thought I was heavy. Fuck. What else did you write? Single dad, two teenage kids, battling cancer. Fucking A. You vibe with this page, you keep it going. Let's uh, it's something I just picked up on because he's walking around his mansion here and, you know, talking to his phone. And there's a lot of echo. It's a, it's a big place that is full of no one but him. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? Like, we know that his daughter moved to Miami or some shit. She doesn't communicate with him because she went to a Bulls game and he was there too and didn't even know when she was going to be there. He keeps so, him home like he keeps his personality just completely hollow. Yes, right. It's it's not a good look. I, I don't know that I would walk around my big giant house that I'm the sole occupant of and <laughs> brag about my life to people. But all right. Anyway, get back to this. Paige, you keep it going. Let's fucking go, bro. Is it okay if I share this? I asked him and he replied this. Make no mistake about it, motherfuckers. Winners win on this page. This is the winner's page. All right, so first off, I call bullshit on this. This So he says, like, oh, man, this guy's actually a huge fan of my stuff. Like, that doesn't mm. make sense right there. And he has cancer, and I'm the one who's <laughs> keeping him going. This guy's playing you, John. He's playing well, you. That's the thing that I, I took away from it mainly is, like, he, he goes, I went into this exchange thinking this guy was a real loser. Yep. And then I found out he had cancer. That's when I realized <laughs> he winners. was winning. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> But just the, just the idea that someone is like tuning into this guy's Instagram page for motivation and entertainment value is ridiculous. Like everyone who's watching this is because they're laughing at you, John. You're just Every waiting, single person waiting for yet another miserable day of chemotherapy, and you're like, "Oh, John has a Lamborghini. That's nice. <laughs> Look at that pool. <laughs> it's a nice day for it. I bet. I hope he got to swim in today. That's so stupid. All right, so." John also gets things from uh, his fans, especially the people that he helps out. John has made it a point to show us that he buys steaks and drives them down to the precinct. He wants to make sure the, the police are well fed and taken care of. Yeah, they have nowhere to refrigerate the sheer volume of steaks that he brought, but it is That's a right. nice gesture, I guess. He brought more steaks than the Tiger King could use at his <laughs> fucking zoo, but it was a nice gesture. We'll give him that. So let's see what the police are doing in response. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Federal agent mad because a flagrant tap the cell plus the phone in the basement. This phone? Oh, sh I just want to point out because you probably didn't see this. So instead of a phone up to his ear, he's got stacks of money. 
Oh. Yeah, so he's pretending. I just that's thought his the rap phone. was cool. <laughs> yeah, he was. He's pretending that's his phone. And in my experience, I could be off on this. People who have a lot of money don't have stacks and stash uh, stacks of cash. Like that's nope. not how you keep your money. You don't know, think Be Bezos is walking over to a pile of ones? No. To make videos with? <laughs> no, no, no. I I think that rappers do that, and that's about it. Yeah. Oh shit! Better get off of it. But you see. Biggie lied, because I'm pretty flagrant, and federal agents apparently like me. Just got this from a state, or not a, oh, not a state's attorney, a district attorney office. Quite what? the difference. That means you smuggled across state lines, mother effer. Ain't no county jail shit, bitch. We're going federal prison up in here, motherfucker. Along with a handwritten note that said, JC, we vibe with your page. Keep going and keep supporting law enforcement. I shall. Thank you. There's a lot there. Mainly, do you believe it? <laughs> well, here's my takeaway from this. Well, I saw this and I went, wow, he's really excited that he got this stupid thing in the mail. Yeah. Should I start sending him some dumb bullshit and see if he re reacts to it? Like, I can send him like a mouse pad, refrigerator magnets. We got a bunch of merch and stuff that we sell for WATP. Should I send him stuff and just put like a note? That, hey, John, we love your stuff. We really, you know, it inspires us. We love what you're doing. I like that. I got this autographed stuttering John picture. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> would, would, would he show this off in a video and take a victory lap like this? That's what I'm wondering. I feel like we should. I think we should experiment with this. I think that's smart. I don't think he's a guy that does a lot of vetting. So <laughs> right, <laughs> probably yeah. end up in a video. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, oh, I sent me a mouse pen. This guy rules. He must love me. Like, yeah, of course, dude. You're the best. We get it. All right, one more, uh, one more video from John, and John's from the Chicago area, right? Certainly. Okay, so all of our Chicago viewers will appreciate this. I don't know all the suburbs. Yeah. I yeah, sound I, off in the comments if you're from Illinois. Right. <laughs> I, I know Lombard. I did a show there a few years ago. Okay. Uh, outside of that, I believe there's a North Chicago, a South Side. Other than that, you know, I'm a little bit in the dark. So we're gonna learn some things here. You know, it amazes me what people get triggered by nowadays. This guy made a burner account just so he could send me this one DM. Vernon Hills is richer than Schomburg, you hilly billy fuck. See, buddy, you weren't paying attention. I grew up in Schomburg. Now I'm in the Barrington Inverness area. Is Vernon Hills richer than them? Is it? Is it? No, wait, 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 wait. Vernon Hills must be richer than my three units in the Trump Tower, right? Well, Come on, buddy. Vernon Hills could build all the fucking malls, all the chain restaurants, all the car dealerships they want to build, bitch. They will never be Schaumburg. There's only one Schaumburg. So I have to admit, I get the same way when people diss Spencerport. People are just like, oh, you from Spencerport? Like, yeah, motherfucker. Step up. <laughs> what do you think now, huh? Syracuse. How dare you? <laughs> But the, so I, I mean, the sheer irony of him starting that with, it's amazing what people get triggered by. Yeah. <laughs> and then going off, how dare you call my town poor? <laughs> yeah, okay, you guys might have more car dealerships than we do. And, and a mall. The mall's nice, don't get me wrong. Like, th that was the dumbest smack talk I've ever heard in my life. Like, East Long Meadow, the town I'm from, is like a somewhat well-off suburban town. Oh, well, la ti da I, Okay. I don't want to give you guys fuel to haze me. <laughs> Long Meadow is a little richer. <laughs> now, don't go on my YouTube and leave those comments, all right? Oh shit. That is so <laughs> stupid. Yay, Super Chats. Doc Jones, 73, five bucks, says, actually, it was for the head bob. Good job, fellas. Yes, thank you for... Uh, Getting your own personalized jingle on here. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. CMOS 4044. I know that CMOS has a jingle on here. Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the super chat. CMOS 4044. With support like this, Carl can treat Vinny to an extra 2 million pizzas. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, CMOS 4044 5 Euro says, How do you spell Buzz Myers? I tried a few variations, but got nothing on Google. Only guys called Buzz Meyer and Buzz related bands. Hashtag free chili. Yeah, so my band Buzz Myers is B U Z Z M I R E S, all one word. We have eight songs available wherever you stream music. I put the other four up earlier this week that we just recorded. They're not available yet, they're still processing. That's a good conspiracy theory to throw at uh, John. The Buzz Myers never existed. 
Oh, is Buzz Bears even a, a I, I Googled band? it and I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I should have known better. I've been in bands long enough that when somebody says, hey, I want to name the band this, I just go, sure. Because that <laughs> debate will last months if you get into it. I don't know. What about this? What about that? So when uh, Eddie, the singer in my band, said, well, the na- band's named Buzz Myers, I went, yeah, okay, cool. Wow. Not thinking that this could be spelled many different ways. It's going to be impossible for people to find on the internet. So I wish I would have thought about that a little bit. Well, it's too late. It's too late now. Rocco Orby, 2002, two bucks, says, Sirianni invested in steroids. Uh, he's looking good. He's built. Oh, is that right? Dang wizard, two euros. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> my. You're the best. <laughs> Thank you, two euros. Thanks for showing us your TikTok, Carl. Where are you at? Where are you at, dang lizard? No Harding, five bucks. Sending birds to Mike Mike's house to collect information. <laughs> Good point. That, they, they were used as carrier pigeons. They're too smart for their. Some can talk. Yeah. They're, they're a dangerous beast. They're not to be trifled with. How do you feel about drones? What's your take That's on fine. drones? Okay. Takes out some nations we don't need, you know? Okay. Yep. There's a couple different types of drones. That's not the one I was thinking. I, I own a couple of drones, but not the kind that oh, blows, those. Not the kind that blows shit up. Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the amazing super chat, Matthew Rowley. This gift lifts WATP spirits even more than watching three hours of corn diff 3D printing a trombone when you can't sleep. I don't know if I told you this last week, but you know, I was hanging out with Doug who makes all these jingles at mm-hmm. the studio recently. And he goes, uh, so girl, I'm watching corn diff the other night at 3 AM. I was like, wait, what? what? Like he really does just what he, when he has, uh, ins- insomnia, he just flicks on corn diff or whatever the fuck that guy's up to. It's hilarious. It sounds, I don't think I've watched one of these 3 AM streams, but it does sound up my alley. I'll have to check it out too. Yeah. It's very dry. I, I guess it's a good way to go back to sleep, apparently. Yeah. But yeah, Doug said he super chatted them. And oh, wow. uh, there wasn't a lot of activity going out at the time. So it was very exciting for Corn Dev. That's big. Mike, what you said about Hack Right on first date was uncalled for and inexcusable. I didn't even know he was a person of color. I said about Hack Right? I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. But I guess he's trying to get you going. Oh, you wise guy. Normal Mike Henry. Someone asked me. Who was I talking to? It might have been Drew Lane. Asked me what Hack Ride's deal is. It's like, I don't fucking know. He's a demon. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> it's like, what does he do? I'm like, oh, I have no idea. I don't ask such <laughs> questions. Raises hell. I never ask anyone what they do. I don't know if it's, I'm, I'm not curious or I just feel like it's their private information. Yeah, that's probably know. the right approach, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think about like Suttering John trying to figure out everything about, all right, Cardiff, show me a. Show me your picture. Tell me your real name. And I'm always like, I've hung out with that guy many times. I've never asked him what he does. I don't know his real name. I don't care. It's so weird. That's a great when whenever me and ha- when Hack Ride crosses me, I'm like, I found out that Hack Ride is not a demon. <laughs> I don't want to expose that information, but I have. I am going to expose Hack Ride. <laughs> He's just a guy. <laughs> normal, He's a human man. <laughs> normal Mike Henry, five bucks says, oh, Mike said East Long Meadow. That's like Agawam's projects, the slums of Western Mass. Agawam? Agawam. How dare you? Agawam is shit compared to East Long Meadow. Oh, boy. Okay, now we're getting into it. Oh, boy. <laughs> we eat brownies for lunch, bitch. Oh, boy. Here we go. They know what that means. <laughs> Rocco Orb, 2002, five bucks. Says, People showing their money online are a security risk. Might as well tell everyone where you live. Yeah, I mean, the guy obviously is flaunting his wealth. It seems like a dumb idea. It's not cool. Just drive until you see the waterfall in Schaumburg. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> All right. Let's head over to TikTok because we love the jingle. TikTok society up by the Chinese to fuck up the minds of our youth and some other people too. So let's talk quite a lot about these TikTokers we stalk and know. Oh, 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 oh. TikTok fucking blows. All right, we're starting off with a guy that we were introduced to recently. His name is Jacob, although I don't know if that's his real name. Yeah, well... I get the sense it's not. I'm confused by this guy, because if it is a joke, it's the wrong joke. Well, you wrote 
you sent me this link and you said, am I missing the joke? So let's just watch it together. Okay. And let's figure out, is Mike missing the joke? What's happening here? Yeah. To answer your question, yes, I am gay. And yes, I also have a girlfriend. This is my partner, Samantha Wynn Greenstone, and we've been uh, together for six years. We just celebrated our anniversary. I just want to point out, anyone who's watching this, these people look identical. They look like potentially twins, definitely brother and sister. Oh, is that right? Yes. Their eyes are completely identical. Their noses are the same. And at first, when I was watching this, I go, okay, is this like some weird deep fake thing that he's doing where he's dressed in drag or something but no i think these are yeah. two separate people so this is the same guy we played last week who did the top 10 list that seemed like it was supposed to be yes littered with jokes but it wasn't really white cities yeah all of his other posts at least recently have all been those top five top 10 lists this is the only one that that deviates from that at least in recent times okay so i it seems again like it's a joke but i don't get what the joke is really all right well let's let's uh let it play and figure it out and we wanted to open up a little bit about our relationship because it's been so confusing for a lot of you i am gay i don't label myself as bisexual i my preference is men but i uh have been in this closed exclusive relationship with samantha for six years and it has been a dream and uh not to say it hasn't been confusing for us at times but it is important to be open and honest about these sorts of things sometimes a soulmate is just a soulmate and jacob has been completely open and loving with me and when he looks at me and talks to me he makes me feel like i am the most treasured loved human being on this earth i just want to point out because my wife's a hairstylist mm -hmm. that women love gay men yes that's very much the case here this is nothing new from your perspective ma'am we sure. get it from the, the thing we're confused about is jacob not you we get it <laughs> right <laughs> i feel safe he doesn't want to violate me in any way no no i know i get why you like gay men but what in in a, a society that's so comfortable with being gay and he's out he's like a, a, yeah he's out of the closet oh he's out and then some yeah and the other thing i like the thing that has vexed me about this is this account has over a million followers like it's very popular Jesus. And I don't get it. See, this is, I, I go back to something we talked about. One of my theories early on on who are these socials is that all of TikTok numbers are fake. That's how they get people addicted to the platform. You sign up and they're like, hey, by the way, you have 50,000 followers. Like, what? That's amazing. All I do is fart in Home Depot's and I got 50,000 <laughs> followers. I'm like, yep, everyone hey, loves your stuff. You tell that to Matt Reif, who's selling out theaters. Those are human yeah. beings in those seats. <laughs> <laughs> and our relationship to the outside world appears very straight unless you know us um and that's because we have the same dreams as hetero normative relationships is that what you call them yeah we want to get married we want to have a kid and we have just chosen each other in this lifetime because we love each other's souls we are finding more and more people who we know have these relationships and yeah. no you're not where <laughs> yeah that's not true Gay guys who want to marry a woman and have children? No, that's not a thing. In these it's times when it's something gay guys like had to live in fear that way for so many years. Like yeah. gay men fought Kevin Meany is a good example. Right, right. Someone that raised a, a, a lovely child that is now friends with Stuttering John, not all because <laughs> he was living a, a closeted life. <laughs> And there's no there's no book or self-help out there for this dynamic they're like you must be gay you must be bi or you must be straight or you're out or you're out and well yes yeah. no how it works they're giving out some theater kid vibes here he, yeah but that, here's off. the other i find it more fascinating if it's a joke because what's the payoff if you're like oh no we're not really dating it's like oh okay who cares? Maybe they're the Stevie Lou of uh, TikTok. There, there is no payoff. He just does it's, stuff. It's just an enigma. <laughs> um, you know, and and we want more people to be able to express themselves in this way. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them for us, and we'll try and answer. And we hope you have a wonderful day. Yeah. And then they kiss. 
at see, the end. But you see what I'm saying? Where they're not saying anything. Like if Solar came out tomorrow and was like, I'm trolling all you guys. I don't think yeah. I'm a mermaid. I don't think I'm <laughs> right, a robot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was fucking with You'd be like, ah, oh, Solar, you got us, you crazy <laughs> bitch. Yep. If these people were like, hey, we're joking. We're not really dating. It's like, yeah. all right. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? Yeah, you didn't fool any of us. It's <laughs> but good, good stuff though, guys. Congrats. Yeah, we wouldn't care either way. Speaking of someone who fucking lies on TikTok on a daily basis, Daniel Alexander, woke dad. It's ridiculous. It's got a story on here, and I am telling you, Mike, I don't believe anything this guy fucking says. But this one is a doozy. I knew you'd like this one. <laughs> yeah, this is this story is insane. <laughs> I got assaulted in a Walmart bathroom by a man who thought I was a woman. <laughs> we're, off yeah. to a, we're off to a good start, Daniel. Drink that sentence in for a <laughs> We're off to a good start, my friend. <laughs> this is a man with full facial hair. I just want to remind everyone. All right, let's see. Let's hear this story. He thought I was a woman. So if you start to listen to the story and you think, wow, all these details are insane. Trust will. me details are insane maybe he said you were a bitch maybe he said you're a little bitch that's very well, possible i was like oh I'm, sir i am a man no no you're a bitch <laughs> spoiler alert i don't know if insane is the right word but we will definitely think he's lying by the end of this <laughs> yeah sorry it doesn't get any better as the story goes on i was standing in a walmart bathroom using the urinal so i was standing at the urinal and this man walked in through the door and he read my shirt because I make all of my shirts. I had it front and back. Hold on a second. I got to stop it right there. <laughs> so this guy is saying that he was assaulted. He, he was beat up. Uh, if you make all of your own shirts, that's a pretty good reason to beat someone up. I would say. <laughs> well, Anyone who makes their own shirts. I'm surprised you lasted that long before pausing. Cause yeah. I would have paused it at, I'm in a Walmart bathroom. <laughs> you know how none of us can hold our piss for the duration of yeah. time that we're in a Walmart. <laughs> And then the guy walks in through the door, mind you. And then the details in this are unbelievable. The guy walked into a bathroom through the door. Holy shit. He dropped and he was, down from the ceiling tiles. And also, he wasn't sitting at the urinal. He was standing at the urinal using the urinal. Yeah, you think we're it's getting a, great, a little too many details? It's a great and he detail. looked me right in the eye and said, There's no details at all. Like, this is, all right, whatever. It said, ask me how to protect trans kids. Okay, so his shirt says, ask me how to protect trans kids all right well, so got beat up for that he's lo he's looking for trouble but okay <laughs> no i mean honestly I, trans kids is a, is a weird area right it's it's gonna turn some people off when you talk you're about saying it's it. kind of just like going out wearing a shirt saying you got a problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah right what are you looking at bozo <laughs> what are your politics <laughs> <laughs> i voted for biden fight me <laughs> Nice shirt, asshole. <laughs> Can you believe this person was upset with me? <laughs> and he took one look at that, looked over, kind of went, <laughs> double taked, grabbed me by the arm, and tried to shove me out of the bathroom. Surprising to give you a swirly. <laughs> That's what you deserve at this point. <laughs> this guy's well, this guy's getting into fights like he's in middle school. <laughs> but again, going back to the details, I, I'm sure you've been standing at a urinal or two in your day. Mm -hmm. A shove wouldn't get you away from the urinal. No, be more grinding by the arm. Motion. Yeah, yeah, grinding by the arm and said, uh, "You got to go, sir." And I'm like, "I'm midstream. All right, I have <laughs> to pee really bad. I'm in a Walmart bathroom, pee." Yeah. I don't know if you know how pissing works. I'll be out of here in less than 40 seconds. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'll be on my way. While I was standing at a urinal pee. While he was doing that, he was screaming, you're a woman. I know you're a woman. You don't belong in the men's bathroom. <laughs> you're not buying that one, Mike. You're a woman. I... He's standing up in a urinal with his beard, taking a piss. The guy goes, you're a woman. I know you're a woman. You don't belong in the men's room. Like he solved a mystery in Scooby-Doo. He's pulling his head off. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's find out who you really are. Woke, Dad. <laughs> in That's the hilarious. men's bathroom? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so he thought I was a woman and decided it was a good idea to assault me. Well, what else are you going to do with a woman in the bathroom, sir? <laughs> and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for meddling Republicans. <laughs> 
So if you've heard this story before, yes, it is a real story. Yes, it really did happen to me. And All right, well, that's why I know he's lying when he says, <laughs> by the way, this is a real story that really happened to me. Like, okay, well, you're definitely lying. I knew you were lying already, but that gave it away, sir. <laughs> if you think this is ridiculous and a lie, I yeah. assure you. And I'm using this story of this really hurtful, hateful act to help to fund gender affirming care. The t-shirt that I was wearing was all about Senate Bill S2475 in the state of New York. Oh, yeah, that Senate Bill. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so I discovered something. We, t we were talking about how this guy lives in New York State. Mm -hmm. And so someone sent me a note. They're like, oh, actually, I know precisely Ooh. where this person parks his uh, mobile coffee truck. And it is less than two hours from my house as far oh, as a, nice. a drive would go. And I'm wondering, should I make a field trip to this guy's coffee shop and get some kindness and get a cup of kindness in the morning? What do you a, think, A Mike? gay lady with no kids came up to my mobile coffee shop today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to wear a shirt that says, fuck your gender-affirming care, asshole. Well, I made I it myself. My... Do you like it? <laughs> can I tell you my favorite part about this video? Yeah. It's that I get... So, come to find out, it's like a year old. Like oh. he, he reposted it a few days ago. Oh, cause he's getting popular now. Just to be, just to say, Hey guys, in case you haven't seen my old stuff, I'd like to be a victim again today. Would you give right. me some nice comments? Oh, so he's <laughs> actually gotten tamer with his story. So his stories used to be even more over the top. And now he's yeah. just like, you know, no one's going to buy them getting beat up in bathrooms every day. I better say that I'm winking at someone and using their pronouns and then they're carrying yeah. me out. He doesn't want to be exposed with a bigger following now. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, hilarious. Th but that's what he said. So he's, he's going back and forth with some of the comments, and he's like, you know, when a video gets over a million hits, it's going to get some feedback. So he's kind of like bragging that people online are calling him a liar in this video. I like the people said, did you call the police? Did he get arrested? Did you press charges? These fucking pussies. I hate the people <laughs> on this page. <laughs> All right, so we know that he is a trans kid, right? I've heard. That's, yes. that's kind of that's kind of his origin story, for being yeah. honest about it. It's all it, he exists because of it. He yeah. was put here to have a trans kid, right? You know, like uh, sometimes a radioactive spider will bite you, and then, <laughs> but other times, like your kid's trans. Like, well, all right, now I'm a his, superhero. <laughs> his kid got rid of his penis, and the, the course of nature changed. Yeah, it's just like holy <laughs> shit! Now I have superpowers. No one can fuck with me. But what about the other children? He has other children. Mm -hmm. What about the other kids? Let's find out what that is all about. Huh? Those brats? Why would I talk about them? So the question up on the screen is, are you just as proud of your straight kid? Okay, and he's being a little <laughs> sarcastic. He's being a little sarcastic here. They don't give me any attention on the internet. Is I'm sure what you're thinking, well, I probably was thinking. Why would we think that, Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a weird slip in. Yeah, I, I like that he goes, I know what you bigots are thinking. Well, I wasn't. But we didn't say that. You yeah, did. <laughs> now, now I'm thinking that, actually. That's very interesting. Yeah. Thinking here, but that's not the reality at all. In fact, there are two very specific reasons why I don't talk about my other kids here. And let's get into it, because they're both really important. First off, being the father to a trans kiddo means that your child is at risk just for being a part of the community that they're in. That is the reality that all parents to trans kids face. I know a lot of other communities face the same challenges, but. Wait, hold on a second. I was trying to think of what other communities face this challenge is like wussy kids. Is there a community <laughs> of parents who's like, ah, oh, my kid's a fucking wuss. God damn it. My kid likes Dungeons them. and Dragons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. My kid's sitting in the basement with his loser friends, fucking rolling a 20-sided die. God damn it. Now I got to make a TikTok page and defend them. Now I got to go to Albany. <laughs> the other communities are at risk. But he's also, I like that he's also saying like, so you're probably thinking, Daniel, you must be kind of a Christ-like figure to raise this child right. the way you are, with yeah. such grace. Yeah, how do you do it? Your campaign has the momentum of a runaway freight train, Daniel. Why are you so popular? <laughs> that's something that's really near and dear to me and pretty specific. So I am going to bring attention to the community of people that's at risk. It's like the whole argument behind all lives matter and black lives matter. 
you don't say all lives matter because nobody's questioning that lives matter. Nobody's suggesting that black lives mean more or other lives mean less. They're bringing attention to the lives that are at risk. So if a house is on fire, you don't spray water on the house across the street. Wait, you don't? Uh, I'm sorry, Dana. Please explain this one because I am lost right now. No wonder my neighborhood burned down. Yeah. I'm spraying the wrong houses. Well, but I'm still confused. Maybe he'll explain what he means by that. Okay. Knowing that all houses matter, you spray water on the fire because you need to put the fire out. Oh, okay. I'm glad he elaborated on that. Thank you. Yes. Fucking so idiots. trans kids are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Flaming. <laughs> So when I talk about my trans kiddo, it's because I need to build a better world so that he is safer because his life and the lives of everyone in his community are at risk. The second reason is because of consent. You know what consent uh, is as a general rule, I'm sure. You know, if somebody doesn't want you to give him a hug, then you don't give him a hug. That's a right to consent. There's a whole what, list what of if, other... What if they're wearing a low-cut top, Daniel? And it kind of seems like they're asking for it. Yeah, good point. What if they have those uh, <laughs> pants that say juicy on the butt? Then what? <laughs> Elabor elaborate like you did it with the house on fire. I yeah, need some what if she's saying there. no, but her eyes are saying yes? <laughs> <laughs> what if she's too drunk to respond? Is that... Consent. Consent. You guys know about consent, right? Ah, I've watched all your videos. I don't know. <laughs> Teach me. Things that are related to consent, but in my house, consent also means that people have a right to consent over their own identity. So what does that mean? It means that if somebody doesn't want me to talk about them on the internet, anybody within our family for whatever okay so what it means is the other kids are like dad if you do one douchey tiktok about me so help me god if i this see was... one fucking video about me dad this is a really really long way of yeah. saying that a couple of his kids were like yeah please don't make videos about me and then the yeah. trans one was like i don't care whatever yeah whatever i i know that <laughs> i'm the only reason why you exist in this world so it's fine it makes you happy dad could you imagine is there a scenario where this kid, this guy doesn't have a family at all? There is no wife. There are no children. <laughs> That'd be fascinating, right? It would. Well, it especially would be because every once in a while, you he'll be like, uh, you'll hear people talking in the background. He's like, "That's just my family. Sorry about that." So that'd be great if he was just like recording, like playing yeah. people talking in the background. <laughs> yeah. Whatever reason, I won't do it. So my kids, Devin and Alexandra. All right, we're watching uh, YouTube right <laughs> Because they have a right to say in what happens to their body. They have a right to say in what happens to their identity. And they also have a right to say in who shares things about them on the internet. My son understands what I do for his community, and he's given me permission to talk about him on the My internet. kid knows I'm a hero. Hopefully this helps. Oh, Those other kids are going to tur turn out horribly. <laughs> I am pre predicting it right now. They are not getting the attention they need from this guy, for sure. I think they might actually be the ones that are all right, because at least they have the sense to be like, Dad, do not talk about me, please. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, Herb Beta Patch in our Discord pointed out that this asshole has a GoFundMe. Yes, I've heard him talk about this. You knew about this? this? Yeah. All right, so the, the photo on this is so stupid. It's a photo of him like looking off to the side with his finger on his chin like e and he thinks he's a fucking celebrity this is what's so annoying about this guy he really <laughs> does think he's a big star yeah and i want to point out he's trying to raise funds for a community art studio oh and his goal is ten thousand dollars can you guess where he's at uh eight hundred dollars <laughs> three hundred and ten dollars <laughs> from eight donations so far i i take it back i didn't know about so actually what i knew about and now i wish i sent you the video because when i saw it I, I didn't send it because I was like, oh, he's not soliciting money. Because in the video, he goes, listen, I don't want any money. Now I'm going to have to send it next week. Because he's like, listen, I don't want any money. I just want advice from you guys to see if you have any tips uh, how to help this community. So he made a GoFundMe and is now asking for money. That's very Correct. Yes, he wants $10,000. Let me read one of the paragraphs on this oh, GoFundMe, please. if you don't mind. It says, the space would include wheelchair access, 
fully accessible restrooms, adaptive equipment to help individuals with differing access needs, a non-sensory space for individuals who require a quieter, calmer space to create, a full pottery studio with kilns, general art spaces, and outdoor garden spaces to enjoy. Wow, so it's going to be a waste of labor. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fucking asshole. At least I don't know why I just like this. company will make money. <laughs> Mike, why do I just like this guy so much? It's weird, he's, right? He's an unlikable guy. And I, okay. he's, the thing about him is, it, again, it's similar to like Stuttering John in the sense that John will have you believe it's because he's a liberal that you guys hate him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think it's the same with Daniel Alexander. Is he thinks right. he thinks every nasty comment he gets is like, "Oh, this is a Trump voter in here." It's like, right, yeah, or just someone that sees through your horse shit. You know that you didn't get dragged out of a Walmart bathroom. Yeah, my hatred for you has nothing to do with who I vote for for president. I promise you that, Dan. <laughs> right, no, nothing to do with it at all. All right, let's move on to uh, some Tourette's talk. I fucked your mom. You're done. You're done. Uppercut. Chicken and crackers. Wind it up. I'm going to need you to put the ranch down. Um, a gentleman's name who I can't pronounce, it's like Juan Burgos or something like that, sent me a link and he says, Carl, I think I found that Balin Dupree video you've been talking about Ooh. where she claims she figured out how to stop swearing. And I went, oh, you're right. This is the video. Thank you. Excellent. This is it. I've been talking about this. Hi. I am so thrilled and excited to be sharing this video with you guys to say that I don't cuss anymore. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, let's find out And I'm why. so thrilled that I'm able to show you what has changed my life in the past five days. With Tourette syndrome, you get the pre-monetary urge to tick. Or what are we quitting? And with that being said, I know what I'm going to tick and what I'm going to say. I have been working oh. with my CBIT therapist for a very long time, Dana, who helps me rewire my brain. I'm mad at Dana. I Dana want to can point suck that a out. fuck yeah. you, Dana. Fucking Dana. <laughs> Ruin another fun thing we had. When I tick. So, for example, we had our first in-person meeting five days ago. And I learned this technique before, but I was doing it wrong. So that's why it didn't work. So whenever I get the urge to cuss, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put a hand up and I'm going to show you how I deep breathe to take my urge away. <clears throat> Oof. No, but that's not fun. Hmm. Deep breathing isn't fun, though. Sweetheart, this is going to lose you a lot of TikTok followers. I hope you're aware. Also, I want to point out she's showing this technique. She's doing this deep breathing exercise. But I've been watching all these videos since she stopped cussing. She's still just ticking like nuts. She's not deep breathing or anything. I'm not buying this. Yeah, I don't understand how it can control only the cursing. Right, only the cursing. But she still yells about wieners and penis. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. Rotisserie chickens and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how she barks like a dog now. Yeah, she barks like a dog, <laughs> but she doesn't say fuck, so she's got that going for her. All right, well, yeah. you've aced the interview. We, we Can you start on Monday? <laughs> what's, what's going on here? She's still deep breathing for some reason. Oh, Balin used to be so captivating. What happened? Mm. You're losing it. And just like that, my urge to cuss goes away and after a little baby weenie fishies and after so long of doing this she said that it should completely take my urge away to cuss the more times that I practice it all right so if I'm the parents and I'm paying for this therapy I'm going all right well how about these ticks doc can we <laughs> I mean, I mean, the cussing, okay, great, but... Good news, we got rid of the cussing. Yeah, no, no, I want all of them gone. <laughs> yeah, right, that's not the major problem, but yeah. okay. It's actually the least it's annoying funny. thing she does. She's yeah, cussed. right, it's actually the funniest <laughs> thing she does. It has changed my life in five days. Oh, she's crying oh, now. Five days. She's very excited. I haven't cussed in five days. I just go off like a car alarm. <laughs> oh. oh, she's so excited. Oh. 
All right, I'm happy for her. God Pretty damn it. The world. Oh. oh, Balin, you're winning me over again. <laughs> damn you. <laughs> oh, she stole that. <laughs> Through her tears. I don't cuss anymore. <laughs> oh, good for you, Balin. All right. So I, I have some speculation on this strategy. I think okay. it might be a new Coke situation where mm. for now we're like, fuck Balin. She's not cursing. And then in like six months, she's like, guys. Fuck your mom. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> I, I can't buy enough of this classic Coke. <laughs> Didn't even know I liked it this much. You might be out of something. Now, Mike, again, I got to go back to your interview with Lauren Compton. Yes. And uh, she asked you about uh, some secret um, things that you can do, or uh, I, I should say... Oh, the words backwards? Oh, the words backwards thing was so stupid. <laughs> <I can do laughs> that was the dumbest thing. She was asking you about secret talents and yeah. and what you're able to do, and you said you don't have any talents. Well, I am happy to tell you that our girl Balin is a musician. I did not know this. Oh, no. Yeah. Balin plays the banjo. Now, the banjo, I'm sure you've oh. seen Steve Martin do it. Very <laughs> difficult instrument. One of the most difficult instruments there is. Yeah. Yeah. Check this out. Hi, everyone. We're going to be playing Mary Had a Little Baby Wayne. Mary Had a Little Baby Lamb. This is Wayne's banjo. I learned how to play this five minutes ago. Oh, good. She's got a yappy dog. (laughs) Give me grace. I fucked up. Hey, that was a curse. (laughs) This is older. Imagine being this bad at something. This is an adult woman. This is a she started. Old. I thought you were just tuning the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine being this bad at something and going, "All right, let's fire up the video now. I gotta perform this for the internet." I was like, "Why is she taking so long strumming this thing?" <laughs> <laughs> And yes, um, that was Mary had a little lamb. If you say so, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about that, but okay. It's more like taps, if I'm being honest. <laughs> All right. Let me give a quick update as we're talking about uh, Tourette's girls. My girl, Rachel, a.k.a. Keat, huh? who we've talked about before. Uh, she turned 18, then she went off to college, and then college didn't work out. She quit college. We don't play her very often because she's very serious about stuff. She's not fun like Balin. Well, I got an update in our Discord. I'm checking our Discord today. And someone writes in there, not cut up, so I'm not sure if this has been addressed or not. But Rachel or Keith from TikTok did make an account on Fanix, which is an OnlyFans clone. F-A-N-I-X. She has an account there. Interesting. Yes. There's only four posts so far. But um, it's seven fifty to sign up for her account. Now, I don't know if it's in our budget or not, Mike. I was going to clear it with you before I invested in this. <laughs> to find out if I'm allowed to do this or not. Fire away, I say. Oh, thank God. Okay. In a month, I'm like, Carl, we really haven't had any clips from that. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm still, I'm still going through it. Uh, I'm researching. <laughs> still curating all those clips in there, Mike. Give me a minute. So, yeah, anyway, Keith uh, apparently has like a OnlyFans thing. Oh, interesting. So if anyone uh, has access to that and wants to report back on what they're seeing, I'm uh, all eyes. I hate to say that's got to be the next step for Balin, right? Well, one can hope. No, a boy can dream, Mike. I, I My, uh, the, you know, uh, p- people probably already know because it got such buzz, but uh, the episode of Quincy we watched this week on Patreon mm. was about Tourette's. And a lot of the reviews I read for the episode and everything were like, you know, in 1981, this is a really important episode because no shows were right. tackling us the subject of Tourette's. That's and true. I was like, that's, yeah, really raised awareness that some people yell in a movie theater once in a can while. I, can I tell you, 
I think the first time I was aware of Tourette's was that wrestler gold dust. Because he would come out and be like, uh, 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 uh. Yeah. and then they had him on Howard's turn, and he was, uh, uh, and Howard's laughing and everything. I was like, I, I think that's the first time I knew what Tourette's was. It's him and Jack Klugman raising awareness <laughs> in a time of ignorance. Unbelievable. <laughs> and now look at us. It's, uh, TikTok's lousy with this shit. Absolutely. Can't get away from it. Yay, Super Chats. All right, let's get caught up real quick. Trent coming in with two bucks says, oh, hi, friend, and Carla. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello, Trent. David D. Dominici comes in with five gifted memberships. Thank you very much Ooh. for doing that. I appreciate it. Dang Lizard, two euros. That's how misfits beat you up, Carl, or rather Lady K. <laughs> you know, people like to act like that. Uh, I wasn't in a Walmart bathroom when that happened, sir. <laughs> Rocco Orby, 2002, five bucks says, even Jussie Smollett had the decency to try to stage his crime. Yeah, I know. This is, no one's buying this story from uh, Woke Dad, <laughs> it seems. They're calling him the Jussie Smollett of TikTok now. That's the sad thing is I wonder if he did set up like a, a, an opera. He hired someone to drag him out of the Walmart bathroom because he does think he's more famous than he is. So he's like, people are going to look into this. Right. Steve Morton, 10 bucks says, Woke Dad woke before dawn. He put his snazzy, not all gay shirt on. He sure did. It's like a poem. M. Rocky, two bucks. Worst episode ever. Where's the jingle? Oh, come on. What do you mean, where's the jingle, M. Rocky? Here comes the money. Here we go. What an amazing super chat from M. Rocky. There might be poop on Carl's walls in Florida very soon, so every little bit helps. It's very funny that he goes, worst episode ever, and then we have to play something that literally says, what an amazing super chat. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's true, we can't change these on the fly. <laughs> Kitty Two Bucks says, hey, Mike and Carly, Kitty. Dang Lizard Two Euros says, non-trans kids have rights, the trans kids don't? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Don't. No, I'm not sure how that rights. works. Miguel coming in. Here comes the money. Here we go. Thanks for the super chat, Miguel. We sure appreciate it. Blind Mike might not be able to see, but we know for sure he can at least smell that Carl has frosted tips. Carl, when you see Daniel do it during a hurricane and tell him you really need him to work that day, then don't show up and let nature do its thing. I see what you're saying. So remember, Daniel had that story about the snowstorm and he still had to show up to work because of that one oh. guy needed kindness. <laughs> oh, yes. So yeah, Miguel's yeah. saying when I do go and visit him <laughs> in Lansing, New York, well, I should wait for a hurricane. We don't get a lot of hurricanes in central New York. But... Carl needs his caramel macchiato. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll have to make it out. My, my buddy Carl will be here. I <laughs> need to figure it out. Kelly Riddle. My boy says, Carl, $100 to kickflip over the mandolin. Those days are beyond me. I don't kickflip over anything at these days. No. Nope. Kyle Lakey, 10 bucks says, I, I did a deep dive on Dupree. There are videos of her mom talking to her about her illness. Dupree is sitting there quiet, not making one tick, one noise, one utterance for a half hour. Fraud! Yeah, I she think that's kind, of, that's kind of the theory <laughs> when she goes, I, I didn't do this in high school and college, so if you know, knew me then. Like, this is a new thing I'm doing. Yeah. I started thinking the day TikTok was invented. It was really Right. Weird. Yeah, it's amazing how that happens. Dang Lizard 2 Euro says, Mike, teach Craigers deep breathing so he stops. <laughs> you know why Craigers to stop swearing so much? <laughs> or any of the rhetoric that he spits yeah. out. It's involuntary. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, normal Mike Henry, $20. I don't curse any less either. I don't curse any more. I don't curse any less. Thank you, normal Mike Henry. Thank you for that $20. We appreciate it. We appreciate the support. This, this is all we get on this show. Absolutely. So we do appreciate you guys helping us out. CMOS 4044-5 Euro says, Irish trad is actually fairly easy to play on a banjo. That crazy bluegrass shit you Yanks play is insane. That is true. Uh, my The drummer in the Ice Tubs plays banjo, but he strums it. I don't consider that playing banjo. You don't go right. for that kind of stuff? I don't know how you feel about that, Moss, but I'm not a strumming banjo kind of guy. 
You better be finger picking that shit. Rocco Orby, 2002, two bucks. Says someone give Balin a ukulele. Oh, come on. We know what ukulele means. <laughs> yeah, but I've made this point a few times. It seems like people are into children for some reason know how to play the ukulele really well. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> they're like bored. The craft. They're bored with that gift. Moth Manber Tick Tock. Two bucks or two somethings. Two R's. What's an R dollar, do you think? Two R's, that's this show. <laughs> hey, oh, I see what you did. What's an R dollar? I don't seen know. That before. A pirate. Uh, for my <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. GG33. We got to learn about numbers. It's been a while. I think people are forgetting what the important numbers are out there, how to change your life with numbers. GG33 is going to help us out here. Excellent. You ready, Mike? I'm always ready for GG. Because <laughs> he keeps coming up with new shit. That's it, what I like exhausting. about GG. Yeah, that's what I like about him is he goes, all right, you guys are tired of this stick? All right, well, I got a new thing then. He doesn't quit. You got to give him that. Like, he's Why? a hustler. <laughs> no, he. this guy knows how to fucking grift. He's going to keep mm -hmm. grifting. What do you got for us, GG33 Academy? Why are numbers shaped the way they are? I'll give you one when it comes down to numbers. Five is the number of change. If you have a five open on both sides, the shape of the number tells you a lot about the people's personalities because people who are fives are very open-minded. A lot of people who are overweight have some six energy. Look at the shape. A lot of <laughs> All right, I have a quick question for you, Mike. Some six energy. <laughs> Remind me, what makes someone a five or a six or a nine? How do you, what does that have to do with your birth date? Oh, Carl. That oh, is, boy. I'm that, sorry. I that know. is so four of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being a total four right now, but what you is know it? What, what I really respect about GG33 is he, <laughs> he's never once to one of these questions been like, oh, you know, that's interesting. I'm not really sure. He always has a long, yeah. thorough answer. He's got it all Some, figured why out. Wired numbers shape people that way. Like you look at the shape. Oh, shit, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Just the idea of why your numbers shaped that way, and he has you can pontificate for six minutes. Yeah, I mean, someone just came up with it once. Yeah. <laughs> this is the answer. Yeah. You know, why is an F written like an F? Right, someone just made it up. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you. The Illuminati. Oh, right. Okay. Um. So, do you, can you answer my question, or are you just gonna? Oh, I have no off like, idea. Okay, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> thank God, like I'm the idiot. All right. <laughs> Look at the shape. A lot of people with big egos have a nine. Look at the shape, big head. So again, shapes matter. If you go to Walmart now, you'll notice all the prices and an eight. If you went to Walmart five years ago, all the prices ended the nines. What changed? Me running my fucking mouth. Also, the Chinese started the Olympic Games on 8-8-2008 at exactly 8.08 p.m. So they went from the 15th biggest economy in the world to the second in a matter of a few years. 8.08 in what time zone? <laughs> What's talking about? That's a good point. I mean, 808 doesn't mean anything. It's just a, uh, all right, whatever. That's all it takes, because, though, guy. If you have the next Olympic Games, you could have yep. the number one economy on the planet. That's it. That's all it takes. They implemented energy numerology with the number eight, which is all about money and abundance. So well, they also enslaved their people. So there's also this thing <laughs> <laughs> called authoritarianism. They that they're also employing. Over there. Yeah, it's it's not just starting the Olympics at eight o'clock on the eighth. It's also this thing called authoritarianism. But okay. now the eights are a big part of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. For a few years, because they implemented energy numerology with the number eight, which is all about money and abundance. So when it comes down to it, if you want to make money, start pricing your products in eights. Okay. So this is the one thing where I go, okay, this makes sense. So they're saying that Walmart switched to all dot eighty eight. Yeah. So maybe there's something to this. Walmart knows what they're doing, and he's saying if you want to sell products change to eight so i went okay elaborate please for instance if you're selling a product for three thousand six hundred sell for three thousand five hundred ninety nine adds the 26 two and six adds up to eight you want jesus fucking see uh, this is where he loses me mike because walmart literally puts 88 at the end of their prices and that's using eight for the power of eight but then he says no no no, no. if you're selling it for th thirty six hundred dollars Make it thirty two fifty five, which adds up to twenty six, and then that adds up to eight. like. I feel like you could play this game forever. Yeah, GG thirty three would be more interesting to me if it was more of a channel that said like, 
hey, this is a weird coincidence. And then, right, yeah. And then showed you all the things that line up. It's like, oh, that's true. Alex Jones and Joe Rogan do have the same birthday or whatever yeah. the nonsense is that he says. Right. But they're coincidences. They're not facts. Kennedy's secretary was Lincoln, <laughs> and Lincoln's secretary was Kennedy. All right. That's something. <laughs> Selling a product for three thousand six hundred. Sell for three thousand five hundred ninety nine. Adds the twenty six. Two and six adds up to eight. You want everything to add up to an eight because eight is the number one. Eight. That's stupid. Why did two and six add up to eighty one? Did he say? No, he said that two and six add up to eight. Oh, okay. but that right. that came from thirty five ninety nine. So you got to add up three five nine and nine. That's twenty six, and that adds up to eight. It's like, yeah, but you the original. Thing that you said was Walmart's dot eighty eight all their products. Yeah. Can and I just the make it thirty six oh eighty eight. But if the that? price was eighty eight dollars, he wouldn't add the two eights together, which is also weird. Yeah, he no, would be like, "Well, eight and eight is sixteen. He'd be like, "Nope, I'll settle for eighty eight. That works for my, <laughs> my doesn't coincidence. Make, doesn't make any fucking <laughs> sense." All right, Julia Fox. She's back, baby. We don't talk about her enough because she's just not doing anything. No, she's very boring lately. But she's back on TikTok. She's got uh, a new thing going on. Now, you might know that a few days ago was uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Yeah. Yeah. So this drops on April Fool's Day. I partnered with Velveeta to create Velveeta Gold, the official hair dye for those who are unapologetically themselves, but also not afraid to be someone completely different at any given moment. I am obsessed with this color. I feel like Warhol's Marilyn, and I can't wait to see what you guys create using this color. Love you. What? What? That's a cheese. You look amazing. The color really suits you. So she looks terrible. She's got this mm. curly hair that's orange, and she's walking around with her stupid getup in mm. New York, and she's got a purse, a see-through purse with Velveeta in it. Yeah. And so my initial thought is, wow, well, this is horseshit <laughs> you know and then I, I scroll down through the comments and there's the official Velveeta saying thank you to the queen of showing us what it means to be unapologetically yourself Damn straight. with clapping emojis so then i had to do some more research and say well okay this came out on april fool's day this is a joke it's not this is a real thing this is a real product mike see i did i did different research because when i saw it i was like Velveeta is the cheese. I'm not getting that name mixed up, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> why are they partaking in this? But I, I think there's a new thing going on where if you're going to launch a product that's absurd and ridiculous, yeah. you do it on April 1st to trick people into thinking that it's fake and that it's actually real. I don't know if that's great marketing because then you're I like, don't... oh, yeah, that was a joke. No, it's still <laughs> on don't... sale. I don't think so either, <laughs> but it's interesting. Like, it, it, well, Someday in the future, April Fool's Day will be reversed. It's like, we well, can't tell a lie on April Fool's Day, obviously. Everything yeah. has to be the truth. Stuttering John really was on Howard Stern this morning. Holy shit. And Eddie was also in Jamaica for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Did you see that? John tweeted out he was going to be on Howard Stern this week. I was listening to you uh, talk about it before the show. Actually. So, yeah. so, then, um, so then he goes on his show uh, yesterday, whatever I was watching, and he goes... Um, yeah, you guys, uh, I do that every year where I do this wow. this joke that I'm going to go on the Howard Stern show. I'm like, well, it's not a great joke because no one buys yeah. it. Well, that'll <laughs> make next it. year really fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> That's going to be something else. <laughs> Howard won't even be on Sirius anymore. Howard's coming back to Sirius just to interview Stuttering John Millet does. All right. And Imagine if, like, Opie and Anthony still, like, tweeted out the other day, like, hey, Boston, the mayor is dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah no, yeah, we yeah. remember, guys. <laughs> yeah, we get it. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, asshole. All right, I got a, a fun video for us real quick. You know, it's no different than, you know, a police officer running to the scene of a crime or a firefighter running into a burning building. It's what I do. <laughs> Matt Fish in the Discord posted this. Tom Meyer is on his TikTok. What's cheaper than therapy? Responding to trolls on social media. Say hi to your mom for me. Oh, wow. Tommy. Got him. Attaway King. <laughs> Got him again. Watch out. <laughs> this uh, fucking guy. All right. One more video. Can... 
One more video I have, another bonus vid for us. This is from Reverend Shitstain MK9000 in our Discord. And um, he was talking about this video and complaining that I don't play it on the show for some reason. Oh, no. This kid's playing a video game, and his mom comes in because his mom smells a smell. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. Oh, Demetrius. Get off the game, go to the bathroom, and take a shit. Now. Hey. Bathroom and shit now. Go to the bathroom and take a shit. I can smell you. Get off. Hey, go to the bathroom. Get out. Go to the bathroom. I can smell you shitting yourself. Get up and go to the bathroom. Now. No. Get no. up and go to no. the bathroom. Not yet. Go to the bathroom. You're shitting yourself. Not yet. Not yet. Go to the bathroom. You're shitting yourself. Not yet. No. I will rip no. everything apart. I swear to God. Go to the bathroom. Not yet. You're no. shitting yourself. Not yet. You're shitting yourself. Poop is coming out of your hey. fucking asshole. No, Go not, to the bathroom. Not yet. Go. <laughs> not yet. No. Go to the goddamn bathroom. Not yet. That must be a fun video game right there. That should be the ad for it. Is that kid uh, mentally challenged or the funniest kid ever? <laughs> I know. It kind of sounds like unique. You know, like when that unique guy gets real drunk on his jeans. Like, Ugh. <laughs> I can see you shitting yourself. Ah, not yet. Ah, ah. <laughs> it's pretty good comedic timing. I like that kid. Yeah, I do too. So Reverend should stay. There you go, buddy. I played... Uh, I played your video. He was calling me out. Do you, you think you were silencing that poor? I think uh, so. Woman? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I have a lot of responsibility here on the show, Mike, as you know. Sure. Where I, I curate. There's a lot of posts people put in our Discord. Who are these? Com. Find a link to our Discord. Sign up for free. Be a part of the uh, Who are these socials channel. Mm -hmm. And I always check that channel. I want to see people who are posting in there. There's some great videos. Some really fun stuff. A lot of the stuff doesn't work for the show because it's more visual. We try to do things that you can understand if you're listening, but uh, a lot of fun stuff in there. And so, you know, I have the power of deciding what gets on the show and what doesn't even, oh. even Mike will send me things and I'll go, no, go fuck yourself. Go away. Yeah. We're not doing that. We're doing what response, I who is now. this? And I'm like, you have my email. So people get very upset with me because they go, Carl is suppressing this important information. Yeah. I've always said that. I'm in the Discord. I'm saying that's me saying that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, let's go real quick to some super chats. Get caught up. Yay, super chats. Oh, you know what? Let's play one of our fun old super chat jingles. Super chats go to buy my contact list. Super chats go to buy my contact list. Wow. That is an old one. <laughs> that's a real old one. <laughs> Super chat, super chat now. Carl's gonna read a super chat. Ooh. Super, super chat. Oh, come on now. Mike, Mike would, would do, do it, it, but he can't. can't. Hey! Woo! Kitty Two Bucks says King Cobra is homeless. I hope that's not true. Well, he nope. is for now, I guess, right? Maybe he live, maybe moved in with his parents or something. I don't know. I mean, he's evicted. Let's I hope, hope he finds. What kind of references would King Cobra have? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like finding a new apartment might be tough for that guy. Oh, the cops only come every other day. Okay, that's good. <laughs> At least it's how not many, every day. How many deliveries could we expect if you were to move into our uh, apartment complex? Uh, just probably like eight an hour would yeah. be the, the most. Now, will you invite a, a volatile girl over to scre <laughs> scream and belligerently get drunk? <laughs> Mothman BR with another two R's says it's a Brazilian real and it's not worth shit. Well, get the fuck out of here with your Brazilian reals. <laughs> the fuck? Damn scray. <laughs> not cool, man. Dang lizard, two euros. Now that's, that's a currency worth something. Those euros. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm saying Craig should stop swearing quote unquote. <laughs> All right. We get it. We get it. Mike's going to be on. Mike, you're on WTP this this Saturday. I certainly am. I'm excited about that. Should we have Craigers on too? Is he available? I can ask. All right, ask him. All right. He's never we'll he's go. never been on WTP. It'd be nice to have him on here. 
I'll ask, yeah. We we can what, tell what them to, sh- what we can tell them to shut be. the fuck up in unison, what, you and I. What power I hold in my hands now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I was just talking about how much power that I have. The ability to curate this show. Uh, J.J. Shearer Jr. with $25. The more we get to purchase, the more we touch ourselves, the more we get. $25 says, ICP Jingle, please. You love Yuns, one of only five podcasts I listen to. Make my day whoop whoop. You seem like an ICP fan. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, J.J. Shearer Jr. We will get you a jingle personalized. Thank you for being a supporter of the show. Thank you for listening and watching. We appreciate it. Yes. I did, uh, again with Lauren real quick, Mike. You did a nice plug for the show. But at the beginning of the show, she introduced everything you do except for this. (laughs) Did you notice that? I I did, yeah. (laughs) Ah, Kirk Minahan and Barstool Sports. Like, she's not even doing anymore. I I don't even work for Barstool. (laughs) I know. He's from Barstool Sports. He might enjoy with Dave Portnoy. You're like, wait, wait, what? What about who are these socials with Carl? No, nothing? All right. Gang, go follow Dave Portnoy on social media. He can do the bump. What the fuck? He's eating pizza. This guy's all over the place. Mike Geary, everyone. Like, what? Rocco Orby, 2002, two bucks says, I hope Julia's drapes don't match her carpet. You know what? You'll never know, and neither will I. Thank God. Dang so Lizard, funny. five heroes. Walmart is a Nazi sympathizer? We all know H is the eighth letter of the alphabet. So, hail Hitler. Germans won because of numerology? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, the yeah, 88, 88 yes, is like a Nazi. Yeah, I, I, that's true. I, I learned that from Jeff Heisen. Jeff Heisen saw the number 88 somewhere, and he was just like, well, that's obviously a neo-Nazi. And I went, or oh, the guy was born in 1988. Just appreciates that year. No, no, big. big <laughs> no, no. There's only only one reason why you would have eighty eight. So stupid. Wasn't that Eric Lindros's number too? Eighty eight. Yeah, I don't think he classic was a, Nazi. I don't think. <laughs> no wonder he was out of the league so quickly. Yeah. Audio file America five bucks. Even John realizes that the idea of Howard acknowledging him now is a hilarious joke. Yeah, it's a good point because he loves to do this tweet at. Stern show and Baba Booey like, hey, I'm going back on the show. It's like, yeah, no, that's obviously a joke. There's no way that would ever happen, which is crazy because you were on that show for 15 years. Yeah, and what's interesting about it too is like, maybe it was one of the clips that you played uh, the other day. But I heard him say something like, "No, Howard respects what, what I, you know, my opinion, and has had many deep conversations with me and all this stuff." And yet, the idea of him going back on that show is so absurd. It's that absurd. John puts it out as an April Fool's joke. Yeah, it's re- it's ludicrous. Yeah, at this point, <laughs> imagine and, though Howard asking about Cardiff Electric and Tukey, <laughs> how great do, that would be, Mike. It would change the trajectory of the Dabbleverse if Howard <laughs> Stern. And it's crazy, you know. It, it sounds stupid to say, yeah. but legit, there are dozens of people who work for the Howard Stern Show who are fascinated by this. Who are oh, watching yeah, yeah, Uncle yeah. Rico and who are these podcasts and potato soup? And they're they're glued to all of this, yeah. And they know all about it. And if Howard one day just sat down in this chair and just goes, "Robin, do you see what Senator John's been up to lately?" There'd be three or four guys popping out like, "Oh my gosh, Howard, did you see this? Did you hear that? Did you see this thing?" It would be amazing. It'd be amazing yeah. content for that show. So, Robin, you're telling me Patrick Michael has nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to understand could, all of it. Could you imagine? Yeah, could you imagine if they did a deep dive on the Dabbleverse? It'd be fucking fantastic. I actually, I know people who know Howard. That's where I'm at right now. And I've had conversations where they're just like, I want to tell Howard about this, but I don't think he cares. I, I can't. I can't do it. You're like, God damn it. Come on. It is weird in the sense that, you know, 20 years ago or maybe even 10, 12, something like that. At least like when Artie was on the show. Yeah. If a character, you know, if this happened to Jackie or Billy West or someone that was on yeah. the show, they brought had this like world around them. It would be talked about for, you know, a couple of days at least, I would think. Oh, it'd, it'd be brought up for sure. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't be uh script under the rug. Now, let's not forget. The Cardiff did call in to the Howard Stern show a few months ago yeah, and mentioned Suttering John at the uh, Dodgers game. Uh, props to Cardiff 
for calling in and getting the mention in there. Mm-hmm. He probably went about it the wrong way. I don't know if there's a, I don't know what the right way is. So I'm not going to call Cardiff out. No, it seemed like if I remember the call right, it seemed like Howard thought it was someone that like John sent to give him a plug or something. Yes, because Cardiff goes, you see uh, John with his girlfriend at the Dodgers game. So it was always yeah. just like, oh, you're one of John's friends. It would be interesting if someone could get through and just be like, have you seen what Stuttering John is up to just to see what Howard does? But I imagine they'll get hung up on immediately. Yeah. I, well, I mean, Cardiff did get through with a couple things that he said. So yeah, maybe that's what we need to do. We just flood the phones. <laughs> it's the natural it. progression. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna call in and be like, Howard, I wanted to talk about how uh, people are just not taking COVID seriously enough, and then we should still be scared of it. And I'm hiding well, in my well, basement. Right this now. way, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, Howard will be talking to you in just a moment, sir. <laughs> Rob, there's a guy on our phones who's uh, thinks that uh, COVID's still serious. We got a call from a really smart guy in Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You know what makes me a smart guy, Mike? And I don't say this lightly. Hmm. It's because I like to go to blindmike.net. Oh, come on, you son of a gun. Uh, Yes, that's where you can find all of our links. Sunday at 10 a.m., we will be live. And the following week, if you stay tuned to the Blind Mike Project, I can't say it right now, we might have a big guest on. (laughs) It just... It came to my attention like an hour before the show. I don't want to jinx it, so we'll see. But stay tuned for that. And wow. if not, we'll talk about it after. So keep, keep an eye on that situation. Um, and then why are you laughing? We just talked about Carrot Top, um, the uh, oh, episode going up next week that's on Patreon now is the worst movie sequels ever. Uh, so we covered a bunch of those. So uh, consider becoming a member on Patreon or YouTube. But yeah, blindmike.net is where all my links are. And... I heard some uh, fal- the news that has to be false. You just did a live show, yet I understand you have another one coming up. That can't be right. It is right. In fact, oh if you goodness. go to hackamania.com and use the promo code WATP, you get 20% off the ticket price. And these tickets are moving. I have to tell you, I'm not making this up. Patrick Melton, nobody likes onions, who's running this whole thing, is now looking for a bigger venue because the tickets are selling so quickly. Oh, nice. So definitely get on that before it sells out. Hackamania.com, promo code WATP. May 31st through June 2nd will be in Las Vegas. And uh, we're going to make that town fun. I'm determined. Excellent. To make that town a good time. So, Mike, you got a uh, a special guest coming on. So, Louis J. Can, Gomez is finally coming I, on. Uh, weirder <laughs> than <blind> that. Mike. <laughs> really? I can tell you after this. I just don't want to jinx it yet because I don't want yeah, to yeah. scare him off. But. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm intrigued. I'm yeah, I'm yeah, excited yeah. about that. Also, I believe that your Why Are You Laughing is the worst comedy sequels, right? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, worst yeah. comedy movie Not sequels. Not just movie sequels. So I, I have to uh, guess I haven't listened to the episode yet. Caddyshack 2 and Airplane 2, right? Oh, you know what? We forgot to mention Airplane 2, actually. Oh, but, uh, yeah. How do you forget Airplane 2, that movie? And Holy shit. <laughs> shame on, that was on my list, too. We just didn't have a, wow. a clip for it, but it was on my list to talk about. But no, Caddyshack. We lead off with Caddyshack 2, Yeah, actually. Caddyshack 2 is so bad. But uh, Airplane 2 is a Bill Shatner vehicle, I believe. It certainly is, yes. Oh, and they boy. go to space, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes, the <Yeah>. spaceship. <laughs> so stupid. Um, you know, I got into plugs. I forgot we have a couple of voicemails. Let's check out the voicemails real quick. Ooh. Hey, Carl, if you need the lib with us for WATS, but uh, yeah, that 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 whole uh, Negro training video thing, you need to send that to Milton. He does a thing called Training Tuesdays. Oh my God, this would be fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, send that to Milton. Okay, thanks, Carl. Bye. I will. I remember I our- it his way. Our Negro training video where they taught, uh, what was it, 1957 or something? Taught how to sell to the Negro, yes. Yes. I feel don't, like dirty saying that. But. Don't try to sell them things they don't want. <laughs> they want what they want. They want quality. They want name brands. It's almost like they're people. <laughs> it's so stupid. That was ridiculous. All right, here's uh, another one that came in recently. Hey, Carl. I was just checking out Blind Mike on the fucking first date with Lauren Compton. <laughs> And I think the funniest part was the comments on everybody saying how this is funnier than any comedian she's ever had on here. The best ones were the whole, well, 
he's blind. He's wearing sunglasses. It's such a shame he can't see the big sweater puppies that are sitting in front of him. Yeah. And then I got to thinking, do you think he shakes hands or do you think he, like, you know, I can only see with my hands? That'd be a smart move. Don't call me back. Did you feel her up or not, Mike? That's did I did I rape Lauren Compton? No, I did not. <laughs> Opportunity missed, my friend. <laughs> I'm blind. What do you want me to do here? Hey, you gotta get the <laughs> invite back. You know. <laughs> hey, okay, good point. <laughs> Are you a handshaker, Mike? Um, in a in a situation where I know it's coming, I try to initiate the handshake Smart. so that I don't I don't miss. Yeah. But sometimes, with what I'll also do is like rest both my hands on top of my cane just to kind of be like, I'd really rather not shake your hand. You Got know? it. Yeah. I was wondering if I ever do uh, run across you someday, hopefully a live show later this year in Boston. How do I greet a blind mic? Is it a uh, big bear hug? Is it high five? Oh, that, well, that I would like, that I would like a great deal. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got I it. Vote that one. <laughs> you got it. I think it'd be funny if you just let me hang it on a high five though. That'd be funny too. <laughs> No, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see it. I just don't care, Carl. <laughs> just leave it to hanging. All right. This has been uh, a fantastic episode. Always good to talk to you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Thanks for doing this. Uh, who are these dot com? Go there to find all things. Who are these podcasts? Who are these socials? Who are these broadcasters? Of course, the creep dot com. Go there and vote for Carl. We have a competition going on right now between Vinnie Paulino and myself. So we appreciate your guys' uh, vote on there. And I guess that's everything, right, Mike? I'll see you Saturday. Oh, yeah. I'll see you Saturday. And who are these podcasts? I don't know if you got the assignment yet. No, I don't know what it is. Okay. I, I teased it on who are these podcasts. But the show that we're doing is, um, well, I'll just send it to you. It's called okay. the X Podcast. It's going right. to uh, be fun. Okay. I'm excited. Anyway, social media, I'll catch you later, man. Who are these social things? That's what this audience wants to hear. Like, whoa! Who are these socials? I'm the one who should apologize. Folks, what you are about to see is real. With Carl. Okay, we got it. And blind mind. Who could have thought of that? W.